Hello, uh, welcome to Comp 3218, Let's Play for Coursework 1. I am Adrian Chapman, a lecturer on the, on the module, and with me today is... Charles Hutchins, I'm one of the demonstrators on the course. Excellent. So for this particular coursework, uh, we, uh, Charles, why don't you walk through what we asked our students to produce for us? So we asked them to produce a sort of prototype game uh, with a strong core dynamic um, and also a tutorial level just to kind of show off the various mechanics and, uh, and uh, things about their games. Perfect. Thank you. Let's get started. Excellent. So our first game looks like it's called Puzzle Power. So. What does controls do before you jump in? Just out of curiosity. Yeah, so let's do some arrow keys to move. Or Wazda. Use a level if you get stuck. So it's introducing some UI elements, which is quite nice. Cool. Hopefully there is still a little bit more tutorial as part of the play itself. Um, this is very much tell you what to do as opposed to let you play how you do. But let's let's go on to the main game and see what we've got. Hopefully this is just a reminder. Okay. So we've got... I did cheat and play a little bit of this level beforehand. Oh, I can't believe you pre-played this game. <laughs> Uh, so we've got some instructions here, our keys to move. Uh, Excellent. To, again, I'm glad the, that the control was not just uh, uh, the only place for this. Good, so we're trying to reach a goal. So I can move around and I've got these very That's nice satisfying sound effects actually when I, when I move my little red box. Awesome. It's counting the moves you've done. So every time you're showing off how your red block moves, you're going up. Interestingly, it's actually every time you take your finger off the key um, as opposed to how many blocks get moved. Actually, go right once and then stop and then go right again. Does that increment twice or is it still because it's in the same direction? So I do like, so like one one down yeah. and then one no, up. No, 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 no. So go move one block to the right, just one block. Oh, I think it, I think it will snap all the way. Oh, to it the... snaps. Ah. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Cool. So let's go to level Two. There's also a, a sound effect played when you complete the level, which is quite quite good. Sorry. Okay. This is gonna be this is gonna be interesting now. <laughs> does, does, does it always snap? It does, so it always snaps. So like it goes till you always till you can't go any further. There's no way to do like a one square. No, so it's just straight straight to like yeah where where, where the next white block is. Uh, so I'm guessing I have to go around here. Uh, I can see that I can see this getting a little bit more complicated as I'm <laughs> getting through. Uh, can I do? Oh no! I'm yeah, really go left. Go up. Go go left now. Awesome. Uh oh. Never and mind. Then, Very uh, well done. And then that. There we go. Excellent. All right, you keep playing. We're gonna start kind of while I start walking us through the marking criteria. Cool. Um. And then, and then you can, you know, have a few mistakes within your play, and nobody will notice because we're talking about the uh, <laughs> <laughs> the criteria. So first, we're going to walk through quality, and uh, quality includes both presentation and meaningful play. Um, presentation is all the good things like graphics, and audio, information design. Um, to be honest, it is a very simple world, but I actually think it's a very effective world. Mm. Um, I, I think they've done a really nice job that they didn't need any more in this um in this so i think i think in terms of presentation it's 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 quite workable in terms of the graphics they use um you said i unfortunately because i'm on the other end of this i can't hear any sound you, you're saying that there's lovely sound effects at is it for moves and for hitting the um yeah yeah there's like a there's a, there's a background um like an audio track which is quite like I think it's quite thematically quite relevant. It's very eight bit. Um, yeah. And then we've got some noises when I hit a wall. Actually, if I say so if I go down now, I get this sort of nice like sort of door knocking effect going. Like you can't go any further. Um, equally, when I like go to another point, um, it, there's like a swish sound. So yeah, yeah, nice, nice, Excellent. nice sounds. And I think you've got you. You actually made a really nice comment there that it kind of has this like an eight bit feel in terms of the sounds, which is actually. I, I, I actually think we're, we're up and professional at this point because 
while the graphics themselves are very simple, between the information design and, and the fonts they've chosen, the sounds they've chosen, it all works together in a very complete and effective way where they've mm. chosen to embrace this 8-bit uh, quality. Yeah. Perfect. So now we actually move on towards um, meaningful play. And this includes things like, you know, I haven't seen any major bugs. How do the controls feel? It, you know, it, it snaps and, and it does, it moves as you would expect. I'm assuming the controls feel good. Yeah, um, they're very reactive. Yeah, sorry, yeah, go on. Yeah, yeah no, no, absolutely. That was the question. So, and mechanics here. So we're, we're seeing basically um, there are the mechanics of movement and wall blockage, right? So it's the snap to a wall is is the mechanics. Um, which does create a very effective puzzle game. Uh, it is only one mechanic at this point, though, isn't it? Yes. Have we seen... Very nicely done. Have we seen anything else? There haven't been any that I've missed while I've been looking at the mark schemes. It's... Um, Increases in puzzle board as opposed to, ooh, there it is. Button will change aspects of the level. Ooh. Well, there's there's our new mechanic. This answers the multiple mechanics question. How timely? <laughs> <laughs> oh. Oh. Oh, that's oh. cool. Oh, I like that. Oh, one. we like this one. <laughs> 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 okay, and a very nice tutorial to... Um, uh, to teach us that one, that was very nicely designed. So yeah, I'm gonna, I'm actually gonna say that that, um, yeah, that we don't have any minor, we don't have any bugs. No. We've seen multiple mechanics. At this point, I'm actually gonna say we're kind of at, at fewer mechanics as opposed to multiple mechanics. But we're we're basically between. Um, we've got some very good pieces in terms of controls and no bugs, um, and satisfactory in that we've seen just the two mechanics but it's a great mechanic so i'm i'm happy going up between these two just as, um, as a, just, as a, just as a point as well i reckon they probably didn't have to actually say this um i, I know it's it's quite nicely you know put and everything but but, but you, you have to could've... hit it so they've actually designed it so that you have to go hit that thing yeah 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 and i, I probably would have look, looked at that and gone like oh i wonder why i wonder why that that's a different colour to everything else, and I probably would have tried to boop it. Um, so, yeah. But anyway, yeah, it's quite... It's nice. It's just, a, it's just a thing to mention, yeah. Okay. Um, so if we if we move on in the marking criteria, keep playing, keep playing, you're going to... Yeah. <laughs> in case we find a few more mechanics in there. Um, let's move on to fulfilling the brief. So in fulfilling the brief, the things we're talking about here are kind of level design and pacing. And within level design, we're looking at goals, risks, and rewards. Um, so I definitely see the goal of this game. It's very much get to the end. Um, and then there's the question of risks and rewards. So there's a time aspect. Whoa, what are these green things? Did you find a new mechanic? <laughs> oh, sticky. It's, sticky. it's sticky. Oh. It's spider web, isn't it? Yeah. And you know what? This is a great mechanic for a game like this. Um, so it's almost, I mean, it's similar. So have, what's the difference between the sticky and the cubes? Do we have, is it just a different color of the cubes or are they the same thing? I think they're kind of the same thing because you could have replicated that with just the boxes, couldn't you? I'm yeah. guessing. Yeah, I think you could have. It's subtly different, I suppose, because that means that um... you put it in line. It would put mm. you in line as a like a box. You'd have to be one up in order to stop yourself. Subtly different. Subtly different. We'll give it a subtle. Okay. Mm. Um. Okay, so goals, risks, and rewards. And actually, for, for even introducing this, this... Oh, okay, so here's where we'll play different between a box and a web. Mm. <laughs> and you know what? They've introduced and they've brought it into gameplay, so let's... let's um, I think, I think they're, I'm going to bring them all the way up into the, into the good category for... Because um, they now are at kind of a set of mechanics. So very nicely done on that. I'm glad we got to see it. Um, but let's go back to goals, risks, reward, and pacing. 
So I definitely see a goal. The thing that I'm not clear about here is the risk and reward. Mm -hmm. So obviously there's something, right? The risk is that you have to repeat, you know, you, you, your, the number of moves goes up, but there's no reward, is there? It's just, well, you just, you did it. Yeah, I suppose there's, yeah, there's not, there's not really any, I mean, there's a time spent going up as well, so I'm guessing it's like a, as a score based on how long I spend in the level, but yeah, I mean, there's not much, like, I don't have much agency, I suppose, over, like, the risk or that I'm taking. You can't make a choice of, like, I'm going to go this, this route over here that is, I don't know, easier, but it doesn't give you, like, it, it, it doubles your time, right? Because you, you know, it, it has a cost or some, yeah. something like that. Or you could take a riskier move, but you might actually do better, right? Or time goes faster. And you could do something with a nice mechanic. You could split the board in two and you could say time moves slower on the left hand side, but it's actually an easier path, right? Or sorry, time moves faster on the left hand side, but it's a very easy path. And on the right hand path, there's a very complicated, you know, maze. And it's basically, do you take the easy way where time is ticking by really fast, or do you take the, the normal time, but it's a really complicated path you might not solve? Mm. And that, that, would be a, that would be a clear risk reward in this particular game. Um, but at this point, I kind of think we're very limited in our, in our risks and rewards. Mm. Um, so let's talk about pacing. So... What we're looking for is we, I think what I'm seeing here very much uh, is tension rising over time in a coherent pattern, right? Through the, through very much the design of a level. I think your puzzles are getting harder here, aren't they? Oh yeah, they definitely are, yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Um, so... Um, can you go left again still from there? Once you get stuck, you have to go. Oh, I see. Okay. Oh, I think, I think you can go back to the, yeah, you can go back once you've... Right. Um, I'm really, I'm really failing at this puzzle, aren't I? <laughs> <laughs> uh, hmm. If you do see a solution, do shout oh, out. I know. Go, go left, go left, go left. Go left. Go up to the spider web. Oh, never mind. <laughs> <laughs> oh, anyway, well, you oh, there we go. I like that you got it. Um, good job. So they, they are definitely getting, we're seeing even this tension rising over time in a coherent pattern. Um, and I actually think it's actually a well-balanced pattern in this case, or, or at least we're moving towards a well-balanced pattern um, in terms of the puzzles and the pieces that are allowed in there um, coming coming at you. Mm. So let's talk about, um, what are we talking about now? We're going to talk about the tutorial itself. Uh, so I was a little nervous in the very beginning when we hit the control part of the menu that that was going to be the tutorial because that was not what we were asking for. But I actually think in this game they have they've done a really good, nice job at introducing a very simple mechanic, making you practice it. You play with that mechanic for a little while, and then they introduce a new mechanic, like when we saw the red dot um mm. or the spider webs appear and then they build continually. So I think we're very much in a gradual explanation of gameplay and controls fully aligned with play. Mm. Um Yeah. I I think I think we're there. I think to make it excellent um as opposed to good, I think where we're going where we'd go for that is actually your statement was very point on that we didn't actually need the words there. Um, you would have touched the red button, or was there a way to design it? Because there was actually one way where you could have gone that didn't touch the red button. So was there a way for them to make you touch the red button? And then after you touched the red button, it was, it was you know, basically you had, to, you had to do it. And that's where we would have gotten to um, beyond gradual explanation. So I think they've done a very good job on this one. Um, but being forced to use that um, 
that mechanic is is the trick mm. to, to bring it forward. Okay, so what do we think the core dynamic is? Oh, I suppose it's spatial reasoning. I, I really hope it's spatial reasoning. Yeah. Let, me go pull, <laughs> let, me, let me go pull up their game notes and see what they've said. Um, so, in this case, Puzzle Tower is a spatial reasoning. Hey. And well done, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, yeah, I think that they absolutely nailed spatial reasoning. Yes. Um, and they, they didn't pollute it. There's no coins in here that, or, you know, that might that might dilute there's no time ticking down which is race to the end um there's just the puzzle to solve um mm. so yeah so i think they they clearly got that that core dynamic um so i think yeah a clear dynamic that was supported by primary mechanics very nicely done mm. I, I don't know if we've touched on information design yet but interestingly in this level um it would have been quite nice, I suppose, to have the dots indicating which the bread dots indicating which ah. shape is going to go. Because I was kind of going, oh, okay, that one does that one. Um, oh, okay. It would. I don't yeah, know. I, three of them. And that's. I don't know if that's part of the puzzle. You could argue that's part of the puzzle, and you just have to remember. Um, but I'm some... remembering that one. <laughs> yeah, but I can see that if it's getting, you know, I don't know about the later yeah. levels, but if it's going to get like, you know, to six buttons, oh, oh god. <laughs> uh, as you go on, oh my goodness. Oh, here we go. <laughs> yeah. Oh no. Oh goodness. Well, that's beyond me right now. I've already <laughs> lost my. Life. So you keep puzzling with that one. I'm going to go on to feedback. <laughs> so we ask the students as part of their um, to get to get some critique of their initial game. We give them feedback, and then we ask them to um, uh, to tell us how they address the feedback. And the feedback. So I'm going to I'm going to read it really quickly. Um, so it seems that they might have in, in the past had it had invisible blocks that appeared randomly, and they were told this could be frustrating, which I think is quite true. So mm. they decided to change the mechanic to be more memory based. They achieved it by making the blocks invisible when you start the level, but when you start moving, they disappear. Have we seen that? Uh, I don't think so. I don't see anything disappearing. Um, I don't know. Hmm. I wonder if it's either in a later level or, uh, um, yeah, or for this is old course notes. So there's a risk reward was questioned. We originally only had the idea of tracking time taken, but we also realized that we could track two different measures. The other method is the number of moves. So they expanded the reasons people would play the game by looking at moves and time. Um, so I think a great attempt at that one, to be honest. Mm. But it still doesn't quite give you enough in terms of the risk and reward. Mm. Um, so, for example, it might be a risk-reward here is if you do it in a certain number of moves, you get something on the next game, right? Um, so that would be a very clear reward. And if you didn't mm. do it in that right number of moves or in a, in a certain number of moves, then you didn't get it, right? So that would be, that would be a, um, not just the count, right, but get something. Mm. Um, and then the other thing that they were told is the color scheme is too bright and that the colors really hurt their eyes, which is interesting. Okay. Um, I wonder what neons this was in originally. <laughs> Since this was the case, they decided to tone down the colors. I think you've done a great job toning down the colors. Um, so in this case, I, I think they have absolutely... Um, feedback was addressed, changes were made, and they were somewhat successful. So you did a great job on the color. I think the risk-reward wasn't quite there. Um, and I'm going to assume that somewhere there is an invisible block that disappears or appears. Um, that we just haven't gotten to yet. Yes. So we're going for successful. All right. I think that ends our game. I The only other thing I want to add before we stop playing here is I've noticed in the course notes, I want to send massive kudos to this team. There is a statement of originality in the coursework in which they have clearly um, stated that they used a whoosh audio and where they got it, and square chunks, um, and who created it, and what, you know, like the license that it was used under. There's music made by Beatbox, 
and other effects from S SFXR sound effects from Dr. Peter. Um, so they've included attribution to where everything came from with copies of the license, and I hugely appreciate that. Mm. Cool. So um, I think we've hit the gameplay on this. I'm sorry we haven't seen the invisible blocks. Uh, that's always one of the, the challenges of these games. You have to make sure that anything you want us to see happens within the 10 minutes. Um, but it is a very good game. I actually, mm. excellent game. Well done. Yeah, very well done. Yeah, I, I actually it's really in, like, enjoyable playing it. And actually, like you're saying about the uh, the number of moves and things. Yeah, that was that was. I think that was a that would it, doing a little bit more with the number of moves that you do in each level. I think would have been would have been good. But uh, uh, overall, though, really good. Like, yeah. Excellent. All cool. right, on to our next game. Yeah. And now on to split decision. Let's do it. Oh, I like even the menu screen with the graphics. Mmm, the bubbles are blowing up. Okay, so we've got... Ours key. I like that it, it, it makes you do it, and then it goes away. Very nice. And now yeah. are we going to practice? Oh, oh. Shift. Oh. Okay, so we have a fire person and a, and a, and a water person. How, does, how do you go... Like, you, you seem to only be controlling the fire person. What happens? If you hit shift now, uh, nothing. I, I get this. I get a vote, like a negative oh, sound effect, like a. Okay. What about space? Uh, ah, then I oh, control you move between the other I person. See. Okay. Okay. It's also quite a nice. I, I don't think you can hear it, but there's a very nice sound effect when you jump, almost like a. Uh, I don't. I don't know what kind of sound it is, but yeah, it's a, it's a nice kind of jumping sound. It makes you know, makes you know that you're jumping. <laughs> Uh, right, so pressing shift again lets you combine. But you have to be together, huh? But I think like you have to be... to be together. Yep. Yes. Can you do that big jump if you're two little people? Yeah. Can you do that jump as a little person? No. no. You have to be big to get there. Okay. So, I have to go so you have to come back to yourself. Excellent. Okay. Well, we've learned some rules. And actually, it was a very nice level design to show how you have to be big to jump certain places. Oh, look, there's a lever there. I bet you can't get as a big person. There's a lever. What's the lever do? Oh, you still can't get to it. Oh, it's a small person. Uh, huh. What's the lever there for, then? Huh? <laughs> shift oh, I'm, get, shift I'm getting... F. What's shift F do? Uh, oh. Oh. Oh, can you go do go down and see if you can firebomb the lever? No. Oh, I, Sorry, I, now you've got to go get your big person down there. <laughs> <laughs> so it looks like I can't fire it very like rapidly. Yeah, actually, like there's actually a sound effect and then another like negative sound effect when if I, if I try and like press F too fast. So it's interesting. Okay, it's. Uh, so far you've been playing it looks like we've got health bars for both the both these little bricks and what happens if you fire the water oh that's awesome that's a shove your, <laughs> your buddy into a wall and... <laughs> so um, because this is blue i'm going to assume that this guy needs to be on here but it's still showing me to use oh okay so it's showing me that i need to use space it oh again uh, oh uh, oh, I'm stuck. Okay, interesting. Oh. Yep, yeah. see if we can shift out of there. Oh. Where, wait, where's your blue guy? Uh, my blue person's, oh, my blue person's stuck in the, oh, oh that's a shame. I think, that might, I think we might have found a bug. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, oh. Uh, I think we have to reset. There we go, okay. But there's All a nice reset well, button. Well, it is very nice. And while you keep playing this game, I'm going to start us on the marks criteria. So, um, presentation-wise, so actually, I really enjoy the, the the graphics on this. I like the, the subtle background. I love the little blocks. Um, there's, I can't quite, I and mean, there's information design around the blocks, both big and small have hearts. So I'm not quite sure how all that works. 
pick up the star. Let's see what happens. I don't really see what the star did in terms of information design here, so we seem to be missing just a little bit of information. Um, but yeah, so so I think I think kind of graphically, it's it's very it's very um, good. Uh, I think I think information design is is quite satisfactory. How's the audio feeling? I can't hear it on this end. So tell me a little about the audio. Yeah, no, I was saying the audio is pretty good. There's a, like a clear sound when like you when you can't do something. Say if I I split these guys up and then some, one of them goes away and I try and combine them, there's like a negative, like a almost like a tink sound kind of sounds. It's kind of sure. indicating that no, you can't combine here, um, which is quite nice. There's also a sound effect when you uh, oh I can't switch. Oh, there we go. Uh, there's also a sound effect when you when you fire your fire little uh, fireball, which is quite nice. Um, is there background music? There's no background music. Yeah. It's quite silent, um, but maybe that's maybe that's what they were going with. Um, I don't know. I would have thought that a little bit of uh, background uh, like music would have been nice and would have fitted the theme still um so, so i think i mean in general i think i think the i mean the audio itself is effective with some inconsistencies right there right like the background um so yeah so i i think i think we're kind of halfway between the two i think the graphics they've done a lovely job about um i think the information design there's some pieces so, for example, your little red guy has lost two hearts. Oh, you died. Oh, wow. <laughs> I'm not quite sure why he's the little red guy has lost two hearts. Um, but anyways, I guess you got shot in that one. Yeah, I think I did. Um, but where'd the key go? Like, what, what's the key for, or the star, not the key, the star. You know, what does that give us? And, mm -hmm. um, you know, yeah. So I think there's some, I think there's some effective but inconsistencies. But I do think the graphics are taking us a little bit higher. And the very nice sound effects are taking us a little bit higher than that. So let's talk about meaningful play, which is bugs, controls, mechanics. We found a very minor bug already. Fine. Um, how are the controls? Space, shift, F, and um, jumping, wasi, right? Or arrows. How are they feeling? Um, I go. So it's interesting. It they do feel a little bit. Um, I, I, the thing is, I, I'm going to criticise the controls, but I don't know what I would have done differently. Um, you do need separate buttons for all of these, but it, having them on F, E, Shift and Space is a little bit uncomfortable sometimes. Sometimes I'm pressing Space when I should be pressing Shift. Sometimes, do you know, it's not, it's not intuitive. Or maybe it's just because I'm not, you know, just not very good at the game yet. It could be that. Um, but uh, yeah, I don't, know, I don't know if there was a particular maybe key combination that would have been a bit better feels a little bit more natural for those of us who type yeah like kind of on a keyboard not on a cramped keyboard right but on a just a yeah something that feels good or feels better yeah okay um and then in terms of mechanics we've actually seen quite a few mechanics now so i love the base mechanic of like separate yourself um so we've seen separate yourself and reattach yourself we've seen a series of buttons and levers We've seen fire balls. Um, now we've seen arrows to avoid. So there are quite a few mechanics. Um, we, ooh, oh, we just, okay. <laughs> you just, you just fly away. Fly, fly <laughs> away. Um, so another little bit of bugs in there. So um, we found that we have found indeed some some mechanics here. So we've got. I think we're we're definitely into. Um, we're, we're we're in a good game. I think there's there is definitely you know a few minor bugs, and those controls are not entirely smooth. Um, but we do have multiple mechanics. All right, so let's move on to um, filling the brief, which is talking around level design, which includes goals, risk, rewards, and pacing. So, I see the goal, right? The goal is to get to the flag, right? Is, is the goal to get to the flag? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah. Um, I can see immediate risks, like don't get shot by an arrow. 
I don't really see rewards, and I don't know that I see a risk and reward um, benefit or you know trade off here. So if I reset this, you see there's a there's a there is a golden star up there. So I thought that that might be a risk and reward type thing where I have to navigate to get to the star, but I don't have to get to the star. Yes. Yeah. So what does the star do for you? Why would we get the star? Is there anything? Well, is there anything? Has there been anything between levels? No. Not that I, not, I can't see any indication of what the star does. Right, um, right. So yeah, also I'm quite confused about how to... How do you, oh, it's a wall. Oh, they're introducing another mechanic. Right, which now I'm trapped myself. Oh, there we go. I, bet, I wonder if fire takes it out. Can you fireball it and take it out? Ooh. So if I do... Oh, you reset. Okay. Oh, this is a slight... Arrows are a little bit... Uh, okay. Let's swap to this. So, uh, this is the control thing again. I'm having difficulty trying to like know what I want to do and what what I need to press at one time. So I need to do sure. that. There we go. And then I need to. No, he said it again. <laughs> uh, right. Uh, click this button. And you did it. Okay. Excellent. I got I got sucked into watching you solve that puzzle. <laughs> um, so, so I am. I think there is a set of goal risks rewards, but I'm I don't know that they. I don't know that it's it's like there's not a clear distinction between you know. Yeah, like why why bother why bother with that star and. Um, yeah, don't get shot, but really you can, you can bumble away for, for a long time. Um, so I think there's, there's definitely a tension here around, there is some goal risk rewards, but I don't think they're, they're, they're tuned very well to each other. Mm. Um, so let's, let's talk about pacing. I think your puzzles are getting harder. I think you are having to play with more mechanics as you go through. Um, I think that tension is rising over time in a coherent pattern. Um, how do you feel about that? Yeah, I definitely feel like they are rising over time. And there's also these, I've also now got another sort of mechanic introduced where I can like move these boxes around, but I'm a little bit confused um, why... Uh, I don't know. The, the, my my kind of intuition is that I need to block this thing from going back, and yet it's not particularly working for me. Um, sorry, uh, tangent. <laughs> no, no, no. <laughs> uh, Could you put a block on the button? Is that why you need to do it? Oh, that might be. I I assumed because the button was blue that I had to have my blue guy on it. Oh. Maybe. You're right. Okay, that was some, something I definitely missed. I think some of the info, uh, like information sort of stuff probably needs to be a little bit improved, yeah. Uh, like yeah. with the star, like with the, the fact that I didn't need my blue guy for the... Yeah. Um, for, for the button. You went, you went to move... The, oh, I was going to say I'd move the box the other way. <laughs> You got your star. How are you going to get the flag now? Oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! <laughs> oh no! Oh, I think I need to reset. <laughs> <laughs> so I, I thought with that box going down, it's a shame that it falls all the way down. Um, it does. It does because you could get a star with that box if it hadn't been. No, why are you doing that? You just did the same thing. <laughs> well, I thought maybe I could do. Uh, oh. A little bit. There we go. And then I can do. Oh, this is this is backfired. This is backfired a lot. Oh, there we go. <laughs> <laughs> oh yes, yeah, so oh, I fun. I can see I can see now why. Right. That's 
a tiny bit annoying because I wonder how I would have got the star otherwise. No. So I think, but I think going back to our pacing, like there is definitely a um, a tension rising over time in a coherent pattern here. That's very nice. Hmm. So let's talk a little bit about tutorials. Um, so in this case, uh, there's kind of, I think, two elements in these tutorials, right? So every time um, in the beginning, we very much had, you know, push the shift bar, push the space bar, push F to get these things. Um, and now we are getting kind of new mechanics like the blocks or this lift or the buttons, and you just have to play along to figure it out. And and I like that play along as part of the game. I also like to think that they chose well to put text on for some of those others that were not as intuitive, like if you push space, you separate, if you push shift, you go together, or vice versa, whatever that one was. Mm -hmm. um, so I think... I think that in this case, we are um, moving up from a gradual explanation of game plan controls fully aligned with play. Um, mm. And I actually think we're moving close to a gradual explanation of game plan controls fully aligned with play and communicated through level design. Because I think in this case, like with the boxes is a good example, you couldn't actually get through this without playing through the mechanic. Oh, look, you know, you have to move a box in order to... Um, yeah, I like that. That's nice, so, yeah. What do we think the core design of this game is? Or core, sorry, core dynamic. My bad. Uh, I, I would say spatial reasoning? Spatial reasoning? I yeah, say. I think spatial reasoning too. And luckily for them, they think spatial reasoning as well. That's good. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> so how are they, how are they, how basically the, the goal here is how do you effectively utilize the split and reform mechanic um, while traversing around each level to move things to solve the puzzle of getting there, to open the doors and, and get to where they are. Um, yeah, so I think, I think that, I think that there's a clear core dynamic and supported by the primary mechanics in this very nicely um yeah very much mm. now let's talk about the feedback oh and look we got to then we got to win. how you win you win but you only got two stars better go play it again while we walk through feedback uh, so let's let's see what the feedback was that they were presented with. Whoa, they put a lot of. Um, okay, so um, to make the core dynamic clearer and more precise, because to other people the core dynamic could have been one of two things, either spatial reasoning or race to the end. I think they did an excellent job. That it is not race to the end to any of us. Um, so they didn't add a timer, uh, and they focused on the puzzle aspect by giving the players the ability to stop and think about each level. Um, especially around things like a risk of losing hearts and lives. They were told their game would benefit if they structured each level to incrementally introduce players to the mechanics. I think you did that excellent job on that way to mm. hear that feedback and actually do it well. Um, so you're gradually introducing new mechanics. Very good. Very, very good. And then finally, they were advised to... Um, come up with a way that enables players to distinguish themselves from one another and... Uh, explain ex an experienced player from a novice. So, um, basically, if you revisit, it's still challenging. If you're new, you still have fun. So they introduced the star system where there are stars hidden, um, and they can try to find and collect them. Oh, and that's the stars at the end. So yeah. basically, you collect. You've got two of those stars. Um, yeah, yeah. So I think, how about this? Let's, let's think through how we would have done the star mechanic a little bit differently. I think, I mean, possibly it could have been solved a little bit in your information design. So right up by where you've got your hearts um, and the reset button, perhaps it could be, you know, stars collected. And it's just a little star with a little counter there. Um, so that you don't forget that you've gotten these stars. And, and that you can see that it wasn't just a useless effort, that it is being counted. 
Um, even that would have made a huge difference here, right? I think. Mm. Um, so, but I think in general, I think that um, feedback was addressed and changes have been successful. I'm very happy with that um, that, that set of feedback and, and taking it yeah. um, into the game. So excellent. I think overall a really great game and, and it's been fun to play and fun to watch. Yeah, well, that's been very good. Thanks for, and we will see you in the next batch.